How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Chain Baker and in today's video we'll find out if it's actually necessary to activate active dry yeast. I mean the name would suggest that it's already active, right? Let's go to the kitchen and do some experiments. There are two kinds of dry yeast, instant dry and active dry. Instant dry yeast can have various different names like quick yeast, rapid rise or even easy bake yeast. The main thing to note is that no matter which commercial yeast you're using, it is the same yeast. It starts its life in the same way. It is the manufacturing process that turns it into instant dry yeast, active dry yeast or fresh yeast. I don't know if you can make out these instructions. It says that the yeast should be added to the dry ingredients, suggesting that it doesn't even have to be dissolved in water. And that's why it's called instant yeast, because it can be used instantly. But well, what makes active dry yeast different? And why is it called active dry yeast if you have to activate it? The instructions on the packaging suggest that we should dissolve it in warm water and let it sit for around 10 minutes before using it. I only ever use instant yeast, so I've never had to take this step. When we take a closer look at this yeast, it becomes clear why this needs to be dissolved. The granules are huge. It looks like a jar of gravel. To be honest, I've never seen such chunky dry yeast. If we compare it to instant dry yeast, it looks like dust. So let's do some side-by-side -side tests and see what happens when we don't activate active dry yeast. In test number one, we'll make two doughs, both with active dry yeast. One of them will be made with yeast that has been activated following the manufacturer's instructions. The second one will be made by dissolving the yeast and then instantly adding the other ingredients and mixing it to a dough. The amounts of ingredients are exactly the same and the temperatures are the same as well. So while I'm mixing these doughs, let's just talk about the different kinds of yeast and why they exist. All commercial yeast starts its life as a slurry, like a paste of yeast and water. Fresh yeast or cake yeast is made by pressing that slurry and extracting the water. And then it turns into that familiar crumbly block of yeast that we like to use. And it was the first kind of commercial yeast available. Now the problem with fresh yeast is that it doesn't have very long shelf life and it must be refrigerated. So around World War II, the Fleischmann's yeast company in America developed active dry yeast. It was made by heating the yeast, drying it out even further, resulting in this gritty textured powder. And because there was no moisture in it, it could be kept at ambient temperatures for a very long time. And one of the reasons for developing the yeast around World War II was so that the soldiers could have freshly baked bread. And 80 years on, we're still using this yeast, and it works perfectly fine. And as far as I know, active dry yeast is the most commonly used yeast. Instant dry yeast was developed by a French company named Le Safre in the 1970s. In fact, it's the same company which makes this active dry yeast that I'm using in the video today. The difference between the two kinds of yeast is the manufacturing process. Instant dry yeast is made by a more gentle drying process and it is ground up to have a finer texture. Both the active dry yeast process and the instant dry yeast manufacturing process kill off some of the yeast that is being produced. But the more gentle drying process of the instant dry yeast preserves more yeast cells. And that's why you always need less instant dry yeast than active dry yeast to get the same results. But it's still the same yeast at the end of the day. It will give you exactly the same results. You just have to treat it differently. Okay, so the doughs have been mixed. We already see some results. Both contain the same ingredients. Both are at the same temperature. The only difference is that the one on the right was activated. And the one on the left wasn't. Let's leave them to sit for a few hours and see what happens. And as you can see, there's quite a difference. The activated yeast dough is rising a lot more rapidly. To be honest, I didn't expect such a big difference. I always assume that the activating step is mostly there for dissolving the yeast so we don't end up with gritty pieces of yeast in the dough. And I wasn't happy with this test results alone. Because I mostly use instant dry yeast, now I wanted to see what the difference would be between these two and a dough made with instant dry yeast. So in test number two, we're making three doughs. The first two will be exactly the same as in test number one. The third one will be made with instant dry yeast. Since the instant yeast is technically more powerful, there is a conversion we need to make. So if you want to swap active dry yeast for instant dry yeast, you must multiply the amount of active dry yeast by 0.83. It's 83%. Now this is not set in stone. Other people suggest other conversions. It is just what's worked for me up until now. If you want to do the conversion the other way around, you must multiply the instant dry yeast by 1.2. That will give you a more or less accurate active dry yeast amount. Now, even though instant dry yeast does not need to be dissolved in water, I always do it. I think it's good practice to dissolve the salt, sugar, yeast, and whatever other ingredients you're using before you're adding the flour. 
But what about fresh yeast or cake yeast as it's known? Well that also needs to be dissolved in water before it's being used, but it does not require any activation. It's already full of moisture and active. The only reason for dissolving it is so that you don't end up with bits of yeast in the dough. It could be called the weakest kind of yeast, because you have to use about three times as much of it as instant dry yeast, but of course at the end of the day, all three are the same kind of yeast. It is the manufacturing process that sets them apart. Fresh yeast contains a lot of water, so it means that per gram of fresh yeast, there is less yeast, right? Okay, while we're talking about activating yeast, let's just get one thing straight. You do not have to add any sugar to your yeast. It does not need you to spoon feed it. If that was the case, there will be clear instructions for this on the packaging. Enzymes in the flour break down starch and simple sugars which the yeast feeds on. That's the food for the yeast. There is plenty of food in the flour for the yeast. And there is absolutely no need for activating instant dry yeast or fresh yeast, let alone spoon feeding them sugar. Another thing people like to do is checking whether the yeast is still alive or not. They mix it with some water and sugar. When it becomes nice and frothy, well it's alive and they can use it. If you mix yeast with just water and no sugar, it will still become frothy. It really does not need your sugar. But enough of that. Let's see what results this test will produce. And straight away, we can see that the dough made with the instant yeast is rising a lot more rapidly than the other ones. So we could have used even less of it. Now what's the verdict? Do you have to activate active dry yeast? No you don't, is the short answer. The dough is still rising. It just takes a little bit longer. But if you want to convert a recipe from using instant yeast to active dry yeast, and if you want the dough to rise in the suggested amount of time, well then you absolutely must activate active dry yeast. Because if you don't, it may take two or three times longer to rise. I never expected such a big difference. In my previous yeast comparison video, the active dry yeast that I used was a lot finer and it produced very similar results to the instant dry yeast. So it must vary from brand to brand as well. So what do you think this experiment? And what kind of yeast do you mostly use? Do you activate it? Have you ever had any problems following my recipes using active dry yeast? Do let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And don't forget to check out the blog post linked down below the video. I always write down things that I forgot to say here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.